Hi guys, I'm Chu from Prudence Asia. We've managed to get a demo unit for the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced and we're putting it through its paces so we can give you a report on what it's like. I'll be calling it the M2 EA from here on because I have been trying many times but saying Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced quickly is really difficult. So let's go see what the M2 EA is like. So the Enterprise line of Mavic started in 2018, giving Enterprise users added functionality such as larger and encrypted memory, ADS-B receivers, as well as accessories such as the spotlight and speaker. The M2E was basically a Mavic 2 Zoom with those upgraded features, and it was replaced by the M2ED. The M2ED was different as it had a FLIR lepton sensor, so it had a 160 by 120 thermal camera which interpolated its output images to 640 by 512. It also had a 12 megapixel RGB camera alongside. This new M2EA is an upgraded replacement of that drone with a much better RGB and thermal camera and as well as a few added features. Now I say replacement as DJI has decided to end production for the M2E and M2ED by the end of 2021. We don't know when they'll stop production for the M2EA, but we don't expect it to be anytime soon. Let's take a look at the key features of the M2EA and see what's changed. So first, the 48 megapixel RGB camera. Next is the 640 x 512 pixel radiometric thermal camera. They've also increased the waypoint mission point count, 240 points instead of the original 99 in the M2E and the M2ED. They've also increased the vertical speeds. And now with the new M2EA, if you look at the picture on the right, you see that dome on top of the drone, that's the optional RTK module. So with that added on, uh, you get to connect to your core station and then get RTK precise positioning but you won't be able to install things such as the speaker or spotlight. Another thing that has changed with this model is that it only supports the smart controller. So you can't use the old remote where you could flip open the grip and then plug in your phone. That is no longer usable. This smart controller, you can also use it to control your other Mavic 2s as well. The RGB camera is a 48 megapixel camera. It has a half inch CMOS sensor. It has an 84 degree field of view but no optical zoom. It only has a 32 times digital zoom. It's also capable of recording 4K 30 frames per second video. The thermal camera has a 640 by 512 resolution. And because it's no longer a FLIR sensor, DJI can now give you a 30 Hz camera. It's an approximately 38 mm focal length. As I mentioned before, it's a radiometric sensor. Uh, it stores its images in JPEG format. As usual with thermal cameras, this one has no optical zoom, but it has 16 times digital zoom. DJI reports it with a plus minus two degrees Celsius accuracy. So you can see from the video, the frame rate is pretty much the same with the RGB camera. Here you can see the digital zoom in action. Another new function is the live mission record. So this is to support the new 240 waypoint count. Uh, how do we do it? First, you load DJI Pilot, uh, select mission flight, select create a route, waypoint, and then live mission record. You then proceed to fly to each of your inspection points. So you place the drone in the position and angle that you would like to take your picture and press C1 button on the back of the remote. You can also optionally press C1 on the screen here and that will record the waypoint.
Now, not only does it record the longitude, latitude, and altitude of each waypoint, it also records the heading and the gimbal angle. So I've purposely taken a variety of uh, headings and gimbal angles in this uh, mission just to demonstrate this feature. Once you're done with your mission flight, just hit the blue safe logo on the left. And when you want to play it back, just select the op mission, hit play on the left, upload the flight mission, and then hit start. It will then proceed to play back all the waypoints at the recorded position, heading and gimbal angle. Note that it goes to each of the waypoints without taking pictures. So this is because it records the longitude, latitude, altitude, heading and gimbal angle of each waypoint but it does not record the action to be taken at each waypoint so that you will have to manually edit and key in uh, once you save the mission now i put this image here to show you a few things the first is the sensitivity and the resolution of the sensor. You can see the heat dissipation coils underneath the skin of the fridge. The other thing is, is that the field of view of the thermal relative to the RGB camera. The RGB is slightly wider compared to the thermal camera, so you have to be mindful of that when performing mapping missions. We did a simulated solar panel inspection to show the differences between the M2EA's thermal sensor and other thermal cameras in DJI's product range. These images were taken at a height of 100 meters as a mapping mission to keep things equal. The M2EA is slightly more fisheye compared to the other cameras, which are 19mm cameras. The sensitivity is still good, as you can still see the hot spots on the panels. If we look closer, the details in the M2EA is comparable to the XTS, with maybe a difference in contrast due to internal image processing settings. You can see the same with the XT2, with the XT2 having less distortion due to its 19mm lens. When comparing the process images of the different cameras, the M2EA has slightly less contrast compared to the others, probably due to the internal processing algorithms of the cameras. The same with the X-T2 as well, where the output has more contrast making the hotspots easier to see. As for RGB performance, the only camera we can compare it with is the P1, as it is the only other enterprise model with more than 40 megapixels in the RGB camera. The images look pretty good with the M2EA having a wider field of view compared to the P1 with its 35mm lens. The camera however shows the problem with having a small lens when we start zooming in to the images. You can see the loss of detail on the M2EA in areas of the orange pavement and the cement slab next to it. We zoom in a little further to highlight the difference. This is even more apparent when we compare the M2EA's RGB sensor with the one on the X-T2 which is only 12 megapixels. When we zoom into the same areas, you can see that although the image is at the limit of resolution, it still holds detail quite well. We zoom in further to highlight the effect with the X-T2 images still holding detail quite well compared to the M2EA.
Now some other information as well. Uh, the RTK only works in network RTK mode. It will only connect via Wi-Fi to servers. So you can't connect a 3G or 4G dongle onto the remote. It's not like the uh, Phantom 4 RTK remote or the M300 RTK remote where there's somewhere for you to stick a dongle in. You have to depend on a Wi-Fi hotspot and then connect the remote to that hotspot to get your RTK correction. It also does not support the DRTK2 base station. So you can only use the network RTK function. You can perform mapping jobs with the RTK module installed. So you get RTK precise imaging. But those flight missions will not have their flight Renex data stored. So you can't do PPK. Radiometric images in JJPEG format also requires you to download and install a DJI Thermal Analysis Tool version 2. Uh, it's free. Uh, you can download it from DJI's website under the downloads um, page for the M2EA. Again, the live record method of Waypoint Mission will store the drone's position, heading and gimbal angle at each point but not the action to be done at that point. You will have to insert it yourself. Now if we poke everywhere, we're bound to find a chink in its armour somewhere. So zooming back out and taking the drone for what it is, it's actually quite the offer. Now first of all, you get the high resolution thermals which can only be achieved with cameras more expensive than the drone itself. Secondly, the RGB camera has enough resolution and digital zoom that you don't need to fly close enough to something just to get a clear enough image. True, it's not as good as a H20 per se, but the drone, the whole drone with this camera is around half the price of the camera, the H20 camera alone. Third, you get RTK once you purchase and install the optional module, uh, which takes away some of the worry when you're performing precision flight. Let's say you're flying close to something, uh, you're flying somewhere very tight. Yeah, so you get RTK which maintains centimeter, price, centimeter precise positioning. With that, you can also use it for mapping at a pinch, so you don't need to keep a Phantom 4 RTK alongside all the time. You also get to keep your existing Mavic 2 accessories like chargers, batteries, and carry cases. And remember for that price, you also get a smart controller which was an optional add-on previously. So, if you have any questions, please forward them to us at inquiries at prodrones.asia. You can email us to book a time slot to come and take a look at it yourself. Thank you for your time and as always, fly safe.